UV unwrapping in Cinema 4D used to be the bane to everyone's existence, but with the new UV workflow updates in Cinema 4D S22, it's never been easier to learn this extremely useful skill. When you wrap your head around what a UV is and the whole process of UV unwrapping, it's like you have this superpower where you can finally accurately texture your models with ease. And I'm gonna be walking you through the whole process of UV unwrapping, cover the basics of UVs, and how you can apply it to your own models. Now, if you wanna follow along with me, be sure to download the free project files in the video description below. Now UVs are the names of the horizontal and vertical axes of a plane since XYZ is already used for coordinates in 3D space. Now UV unwrapping is the process of flattening out a 3D model into 2D representation for texturing. Now think of a stuffed animal. It's made by sewing together separated pieces of flat fabric based on a sewing pattern to create one sewn together stuffed animal. So basically UVing is that process of defining seams and then unsewing or unwrapping a model at its seams to flatten it out to easily texture. UV mapping is then when you apply a texture and map it to your model utilizing those UVs. So why the need for UVs and unwrapping at all? Well, to demonstrate the why, let's just start with a very simple case of a cube. And if we went and double clicked in the material manager down here and opened up the material editor and just loaded up, say, a tile texture or a checkerboard texture even and applied this to our cube, you'll see that this is mapped perfectly. No stretch squares, nothing like that. Now, what happens if I make this a little longer? Well, you're going to see that the texture stretched out on these polygons that we actually made longer. And the reason for that can be made more apparent if we actually go and check out the UVs of our object. Now remember the UVs are just the 2D representation of a 3D object. Now to be able to generate a UV tag, what we need to do is make this object editable because we can't edit UVs on a primitive object. Okay, so I'm gonna hit C to make that cube editable and you'll see that that generated this UVW tag. This holds all of the UV information for this piece of geometry. So to view the UVs, we're gonna go to our body paint UV edit layout and you'll see the 2D representation of our object here. Now, if I go into my polygon mode here and select this polygon here, you'll see that even though this is a you know pretty long stretched out polygon, it's actually mapped to this UV texture view as a perfect square. And this is why we have this stretched out texture. Okay, so if I select this polygon here and move this around, you'll see that all the UV editor is is showing how a texture is mapped to a single polygon. So a UV corresponds with a 3D polygon face. If I hit T for scale, I can scale this down and you'll see that the pattern, that grid pattern is actually getting bigger. Now to easily visualize this, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that material, that checkerboard material, and I'm gonna use a UV map instead. So I'm gonna go to textures, UV map, and you can actually see a test UV pattern or, or grid that allows you to basically test how this pattern and grid maps to an object and see if there's any issues with the UVs, like if there's any stretching or anything like that, because if the pattern is stretched, any texture will be stretched as well, just like that checkerboard pattern. So the whole process of UV unwrapping is trying to be able to adjust the UVs so a texture isn't stretched out. So they're actually more visually representing the actual polygon space, like this is a very you know horizontal polygon here, and it's not represented like that in our 2D UV view. So that's why we need to adjust and play around with the UVs, the 2D representation of those polygons to make it match the actual physical 3D version of that polygon. Now in Cinema 4D, 
version S22 and above, there's a whole bunch of new ways to automatically fix this problem. And this is done by new algorithms, new workflows, and things like that. Now, the easiest way to fix something like this is to utilize the automatic UV options, which try to automatically take the real 3D polygon space and actually have that represented in the 2D view. So to do that and to utilize the automatic UVs, I'm just going to make sure all of the polygons are selected. So I'm going to hit Command or Control A to select all of the UVs in the texture editor. And I'm just going to go to automatic UVs. Now, it makes sense to use the cubic algorithm here because uh, we have a cube. And if we hit apply, you're going to see that. Check that out. That polygon here was represented, used to be represented as a square, just like this polygon here. You'll see that if I select a UV here, it'll actually show me which polygon it's corresponding with. Okay. So if I select this polygon here, you can see that. Check that out we have this UV stretched to the same size as the actual polygon is in our 3D view. Now, let's go ahead and bring down the opacity of this UV grid. If you don't see this menu, just go to View, Configure, and just go to this Back tab, and this is where you can adjust the UVs, or you can even load up your own UV map, or just turn off that UV map altogether. I'm just gonna turn back on that UV map, and you can see, as I select each of these UVs, the corresponding polygons that they are representing. So you can see that, okay, if I bring this up even more, the opacity, you can see this D1 here. That is this UV island. So a UV island is basically polygons that are on their own little island space. So this is technically, you know, a UV island, its own polygon, it's on its own island. And you can see that this is the part of this UV grid texture that will be mapped to this polygon. Now, again, I can move this and you can see that it's going to change which part of this grid texture is mapped to that polygon surface. Now, the whole reason you want to unwrap an object and map UVs correctly is you have this nice even distribution of say a grid texture so you have no distortion. Now what I want to do now is kind of show how this can kind of all fall apart if you don't have UVs accurately represented to how that actual 3D polygon is as far as the shape, the aspect ratio, all that good stuff. If I go into my point mode here, I can select a point and move this. And you'll see because we are adjusting this and changing the mapping of this texture, notice I'm not actually adjusting the point in the actual 3D object, but just how this polygon is mapping this texture. You can see that if this is not a perfect you know, in that same shape, that same rectangular shape, how this is getting distorted because we have this D2 here and it's represented in this top corner. And then we have this D3 and it's getting, you know, really janky right in here. And that's because the UV is trying to map this texture, this really, you know, parallelogram. I don't know if that's really, that's, no, this isn't a parallelogram, but this polygon kind of shape, uh, and trying to map it as best it can to this perfectly rectangular shape, okay? So that's the whole thing is what UV mapping does is gives you the ability to fix things like that. Now, not uh, necessarily in the manual way I'm doing it right now as I'm just selecting these points and trying to get back to that original rectangular position, but you can see now how we can map a texture accurately without distortion now because as of right now these UVs are mapped pretty well to the actual you know shape and size of the actual 3D polygons. Now that's a very easy case just this cube so let's up the difficulty a little bit and show a way we can actually unwrap something manually. All right, so here is our mushroom. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna show an example of when auto unwrapping fails you 
and you have to figure out the whole unwrapping process manually. Okay, so this this model will will do us well to show the limitations of automatic unwrapping. So let's go ahead and we have this uh, UV tag already applied to it. It's by default. I basically made this mushroom using a lathe object. And we can go and visualize the UVs by going to body paint UV edit. And if I select that mushroom, we'll see the UV grid. And let's see as far as our UV map, how the texture distortion looks. And you can see that we, we have pretty heavy distortion here. Even if I turn the subdivision surface on to smooth the polygons, we have a lot of distortion, especially at the top and bottom. Again, we use that lathe object, so we have a lot of weird mapping going on. And we can actually see why this is, is going to be you know, truncated like that by going to point mode and just selecting that point. And you'll see, okay, that point is over here. But one thing you'll notice is if I select this point, I'm also selecting the same point there as well. And if I select all of the points on this left side, you'll see they all occupy the same spot. So we have all these texture, all this side of the texture here, all getting funneled into one single point. So all these points are in just this one single point right here. So that's why we have such extreme distortion. So this automatic wrapping is not gonna help us at all. Same thing on this side. You can see if I select all the points over here, no bueno. They're, they're just all getting stretched and all getting funneled in the top here. Now, what I ultimately want to do is map this so I can just simply paint on little dots or spots on the top of this mushroom cap. And how we can do this is by using something called the Body Paint 3D Paint feature, which is basically like Photoshop for 3D objects, where you can actually paint, use brushes, like Photoshop brushes, and paint directly onto the surface of an object. So let's go ahead and go into 3D paint layout. And to set this up to be able to be painted on, you can see the little brush tool here, the size, all this good stuff. You can see that I can't actually paint on this just yet. And what we need to do is actually set this up to be painted on. We need to apply a texture to it. So we can do this easily by going to the paint setup wizard. We'll get the magical wizard out. And you can see here's our subdivision surface and our mushroom. They're checked on by default. So those are the objects we want to set up for body paint. I'll go to next. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck this recalculate UV. We'll just use the existing UV, even though it's wrong, just because I want to demonstrate, you know, why UVs, if they're that distorted, how it can even screw up if you want to paint on directly onto the surface. Uh, everything else here is good. Go to next. And here's where we can create a new material. And here is where we can choose what channels we want. So if I go to color, I can choose the default color it'll generate. So maybe you know, like a mushroomy color, something like that. And then we get to set the texture size. So I just did 2K, so 248 by 248. And I'll go to finish and it'll do its thing. You'll see that that texture that uh, the color we chose for the color channels already applied. You can see in the objects manager, we have this new material here. And you can see that this material color 6.tiff, this is our default texture that we're using. And if I go to layers, here's that background layer. And we can go ahead and just add a new layer, just like in Photoshop, and paint directly onto that background color. So I'm gonna go into my brush, and I can choose a color for the brush. So let's say, uh, let's do red and I can adjust the size here. You'll notice that the brush is represented as a perfect circle, but if I hover over this 3d object, you'll see that if I just click, this is not a perfect circle. And why that is, is because of our inaccurate and bad UVs. Okay. You can see how this is really stretched out here. If we went at the top here, we're going to get a really weird distorted, uh, paintbrush stroke. And even at the bottom here, I mean, maybe right about here, we're getting close to being a circle and have like a perfect dot. But man, like this is just really distorted, especially as we go down here. Like this is just not going to work. But it is cool that we can just paint directly onto the surface here. Uh, but all that to say is we need to do some work on those UVs if we want to just paint dots on the top. OK, so let's go into our UV edit mode and let's just delete that texture that we made. We don't need it. And uh, let's go and zoom out and let's just select this UVW tag. 
And let's just for posterity, let's go and choose one of these automatic UV options. So for the cube example, we choose cubic. So we'll go and we'll choose apply. And you'll see that we have all of these UV islands now. Let's go back to our view configure, bring down this UV map opacity so we can actually see what's going on. And if I deselect, you can see all these UV islands, all these seams. And you can see this like patchwork of seams here represented as these highlighted edges that are highlighted white. And you just see how this distortion of this texture, the UV grid is working. It's just like, you know, I, I mentioned off the top that unwrapping is like unstitching a stuffed animal. And how you unwrap something is by defining these seams, which are these edges in white. And the rule of thumb is you want the least amount of islands as possible because if you have too many, you have the current situation that we're in right now where this looks like a patchwork of different fabrics that are stitched together. And if this was a teddy bear, it would look like one from a horror film because it's you know stitched together in weird places, like maybe an eye mall's missing, I don't know. But basically, this is not going to work for us, okay? So you also want to be able to have the seams where you can't see them visually, okay? So if you think of like a, a teddy bear, there's going to be a seam at the back of the spine because you don't really see it, right? And, you know, some of these seams are positioned pretty well, like this seam right here. If I go to the edge mode and select, uh, go to UL to get a loop selection, this seam right here, that's positioned pretty uh, logistically well because we can't see that seam right there. And even at the bottom, like this isn't that bad. Uh, and even this loop selection here, that seems not bad either, especially uh, if at the end of the day, we're going to apply a different material to the underneath of the cap using like a, a polygon selection. Uh, and then same thing with the top. So that's an, a strategic place to place a seam is if you know you're applying a different material on, you know, polygon selections, stuff like that. Uh, that's fair game for seams. Uh, so all that to say, this unwrapping, this automatic UV unwrapping did not go as planned. So maybe we'll try out this pack. Maybe we'll we'll get a little bit better uh, result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have all of my polygons selected. So I'm going to go to polygon mode. I'll select one of these polygons and just go command or control A to select them all. And I'll apply this packed algorithm. Let's see what this does. And you can see that we're back to that same issue we had before where, you know, these polygons are not rep represented uh, well at all. Where if I select one of these polygons here, you, know, you can see that, okay, maybe that's mapped correctly. But what about this polygon here? This is much more elongated than what it's visually represented as in our UV map. And again, we're, it's like we're back to that cube where the polygons are re represented accurately in a 2D view. So that's why you get that stretching. Okay, so pack doesn't work. Let's try angle. And you'll see this is even worse. Like we have all this distortion. It's it's sideways. It's it's This isn't going to work. Okay, so this is where we delete the UVW tag and we set out to unwrap this ourselves. Now, how you approach UV unwrapping is dictated by the model you're working with but it always helps to visualize how an object could be unstitched and flattened out to make a 2D sewing pattern. So visualizing those seams. So again, maybe we have, you know, I know that if I go UL to get a loop selection, if I select this seam right here, I know that I'm gonna have like maybe a red material on the top here and another material at the bottom for the underneath of the cap. So this is a good spot to place a seam. Now to make a seam and to basically cut this, I'll just select that edge selection and then just simply go to UV unwrap. Now you'll see that we have two islands. If I go to polygon mode and go to live selection and double click this island here, you'll see this is all of these polygons represented right here. And you can see that this UV grid texture is mapped flatly to the top here. Okay, I'll go in my view, configure all and bring up that opacity just a little bit. So you can see how that texture's mapped. Now, if we were gonna do that checkerboard pattern or something like that, this would actually be a lot of distortion, but basically all we wanna do is kind of flatten this out. So if I select this polygon here, it looks visually the same way it does in our 3D view. And this will help me when I go to paint on the dots on the top using that body paint 3D paint uh, feature. Okay, so if I select this bottom island here, 
and I look at that grid texture, you can see we have a lot of distortion here as well, uh, especially at the bottom here, not looking too good. So what I can do to fix this distortion is number one, I can go and maybe make another cut here because again, I know that I'll probably have a different texture from say if I do UL to make a loop selection here. So from this point to this point, this loop selection, I'll have one material. And then from this loop selection down, I'll have another material. So uh, another thing that helps us is this seam will probably be hidden anyways. So this is a great place for a seam. So I already have one seam cut. And the great thing about this is we can easily just iteratively add other seams on top of the seams we already defined. So I'll just go and click UV unwrap. And you'll see that now we have a flat map texture here. And we still have all the distortion on the bottom of our mushroom here. So we're going to need to approach this a different way. So how you can visualize this is if you were trying to unwrap, say, like a, a sleeve or a cylinder, uh, like a sleeve of a jacket. And basically, if you if you think of how a jacket is is made, you know, you have the you know, where the wrist is. So maybe we have like the cut. So if this is like where the wrist is, we'll have a cut here, an opening for our hand. And then there's a seam, you know, somewhere along the back of your jacket. Again, again, you, you have the seam where you can't see it. So let's go ahead and place a seam at the back of our mushroom here. So this is, this is the front and this is the back here. So I will go and make a loop selection here. And one thing I'm going to do is check on this stop at selections because I already have this loop selection here and I added to it by holding the shift key down. And what I'll do is hold the shift key down here and make a loop selection right between these current uh, selected loops. And there we go. And so you can see I have a loop selection at the bottom, the back here, and then right here. And then I'll go ahead and just click UV unwrap. And you'll see that we have uh, a slightly distorted texture here, but it's no longer massively distorted. Now, if I go to my live selection mode and double click this area, you can see here is our visual representation of this bit right here. Okay, and we also have this little area here, and that corresponds with that bottom. And again, we're probably not going to see that bottom, so it's, it's fine. Uh, but we kind of flattened this out and made this so it's not as heavily distorted as we had before. So again, if we applied a grid material to this by double clicking and making a new material, going to effects and going to surfaces checkerboard and applied that to the mushroom, you'll see that this doesn't map. I mean, this look, it doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look great. Okay, so we have the distortion up here and all that good stuff. So we could, if we were actually applying a material to this and not just painting directly onto it, we could do a little bit better work of this. Like we could double click here. We can go to the transform tool here. And this is almost like the transform tool in uh, Photoshop where we can just like rotate this and kind of straighten out how that grid is applied there. Okay. Another thing we can do is select all of the polygons here by hitting Command or Control A and going to this Relax UV. And what this does is it tries to prevent further distortion. So it's trying to fix all the distortion here. And we can visualize if there is any distortion on our UV map polygons by going to View and going to Distortion. And you can see that we have this heat map where anything that's blue is stretched and everything that's red is squashed. And you can see that the heat map is fairly faint. So not a lot of distortion going on, but what we can do is again, select all these polygons. We'll just use the default LSCM and hit apply. And you'll see that it changed a little bit. What we can do is maybe try the other algorithm and see if that helps at all. And you'll see that, nope, doesn't really, doesn't really do that much, uh, but you can see that I can double click and move all this stuff around, double click this. I'm still in my transform tool and just try to, you know, even this out a little bit. Now, another thing we can do is we know this is kind of cylindrical uh, to some extent. So what we can do is select this UV island and we can go into this projection method here and we could try a couple things. We can see if cylinder works 
And you'll see this just made this UV island really big. And I'll just scale this down and kind of move this. And you can see that this actually maps pretty, you know, pretty well. We have this distortion right here though. And that's because right here, this should actually be, this polygon should actually be right there. It kind of like got unstitched so I can move this manually over here to fix that. I can also go and select this edge, this edge, and this edge. Get out of my transform tool here and just go to the live selection and just select these edges and just go to UV weld and it will stitch those polygons together. And now what I can do is go into point mode and just start selecting and moving all of these points. And kind of straighten them out a little bit and just manually fix it this way. And you'll see that we no longer really have a lot of distortion. So that's one way to fix that. Again, it, how you UV unwrap is completely dependent on your model. So I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so that grid material is looking all right. And uh, now we can go and try to paint the dots on this again. So I'm just gonna go and delete that material I'll apply that material that we created before and let's go into 3D paint, body paint mode. And actually you'll see we actually have uh, some paint already on it. So I'll just go to that layer we painted on and just delete it and create a new layer there. So you can see here's my background. Go to the paint again and we'll just make sure that that layer is turned on. So again, this is just like painting in Photoshop. And you'll see that now our cursor is a perfect circle. So I can paint a dot there, adjust the size, paint a dot there, paint a dot here, here. And you know, this is really a really cool way to texture a model. Now I'll be showing in just a little bit how you can actually export out your UV grid so you can actually paint directly in Photoshop by exporting a material that you can paint on in Photoshop and then re-import into Cinema 4D and apply that as a material, apply that texture as a material. So maybe we want to go down here and uh, let's make a smiley face. So, so there's our uh, little mushroom character that we UV unwrapped manually and tried a bunch of different methods of UV unwrapping. And uh, you know, the, this worked pretty well, okay? So now on to the final boss. We are going to try to unwrap an actual character. All right, so here we go. Here is a more traditional character. I'm calling this a sloth. <laughs> even though it might not look like much of a sloth. And that's kind of where textures are really gonna help this character. And so that's gonna be very dependent on a very good UV map. So uh, we're gonna have to unwrap this guy pretty good because this guy needs some pants or something. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out just like we did with the mushroom character, where we're gonna start defining seams by using loop selections and, and strategically placing our seams and cuts to properly unwrap this character. Now, again, this, this helps to try to think of how a stuffed animal of this character would be stitched together as well. Even visualizing how like a, a jacket is stitched together will help with the arms and legs or even jeans. So always thinking of that to help tackle uh, and approach UV unwrapping a character. So. Let's go ahead and start by grabbing our loop selection by hitting U and L. I'm just gonna zoom in here and let's just grab a loop selection around the neck there. So just like we did with the top of the mushroom cap, we made a loop selection and then we went to UV unwrap. So we got two islands now, one that represents the head. If I go to my live selection tool and double click here, you can see, okay, that's the head. And this body that strangely looks like a sloth face is actually everything else, okay? So what we can do is we have no reference for like what the distortion is, although just by visually looking at that flattened out version, you can see that this is the top of the head and it's really smushed. 
you can see how spread out the actual 3D object is, those edges. So I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of distortion. So let's check that by going to textures, UV map to get our UV texture applied. And yep, I was right. A lot of distortion going on here. So this is not going to be all that great. So what we need to do is we need to think of this head. If we wanted to flatten out a head, think of like a, a Halloween mask where if you wanted to flatten out a mask, you would have to do a lot more than just having a hole at the bottom of the head, okay? So some masks actually have a seam or a bit cut out the back of the head here, or the back of the mask, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. And instead of using a loop selection, I'm gonna go and grab my path selection tool by going to U and M for path selection, and I'm just gonna go and right where that loop selection is, I'm going to hold the shift key down to add to the selection and just shift in, move on up, and add this path selection here and just go right up the back of the head. So right about there is pretty good. We don't want to go so high that we might see this seam because, again, this is going to be a seam. And uh, with that loop selection and that seam there, let's go and grab UV Unwrap. You'll see that that helped to flatten out and undistort the head there. Now it did nothing to help the body, but you can see on the back of the head, we have all this uh, little bit of distortion and uh, that seam, but again, we're not, we are not gonna see that because we'll be seeing the front of the head. And what we can do now is we can see if I go to my live selection tool and double click this head here, right now the head is vertical. But we need to make it horizontal, so we'll just go to our transform tool and just rotate this, hold the shift key down to constrain to increments of five degrees, and we can just move this down and place it there. Okay, and now we can go ahead and double click this UV island and uh, we'll just move this out of the way. Now we need to make sure that all the UV, all the polygons are within this UV map so we can just scale this down. And it's fine because we're gonna be adjusting this UV island anyways uh, as we start unstitching the arms and legs and all that good stuff. All right, so let's go back to our edge tool and go to our live selection and let's grab our loop tool. So UL to grab our loop selection. And I'm going to grab, again, this is, we, we need to think of this as if this was a jacket. So how is a jacket stitch? Where you have the stitch right where the top of the sleeve is by your shoulder. And then you probably have like a seam at the back of your jacket as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll grab my path selection again. So U, M, and I'll just grab, and let's just make sure that this is a nice complete loop. Yep, this one, this seam doesn't loop, it loops weirdly right there. You can see how it loops in the backside. This is a good cut right here. So actually what I'll do is I'll just click on this stop at selections and just click right here and hold the shift key down to add to selection. So this will be a seam that goes through the fingers, but then we have the seam on the front side. So I don't want that. We don't want a seam in the front, so it'd be unseemly. And we're just gonna deselect these edges here by command or control clicking and deselecting these bits here. And deselect that. And I think it's fine to have these seams here in the middle of the fingers because you're not gonna see them, right? And uh, that's a good seam. So we have the seam on the uh, left arm. So let's go ahead and mirror this onto the right side. So what I'm gonna do is just mirror that selection by clicking the mirror selection tool. And let's see if this worked and make sure that all those seams, yep, all the seams in there. And you can actually see, whoops, this didn't go all the way through. So why is that? Well, if we go into this little gear here, and click on that, you can see that there's this tolerance option. Now, depending on how perfectly symmetrical your model is, you may have to up this tolerance because it's not sensing some of these edges. So maybe let's do a tolerance of five and hit okay. And uh, doesn't look like it did anything. So let's go ahead and looks like we're just gonna manually have to do this. So that's fine. We'll go in here, click that edge, click that edge. And this one, 
and make sure all that's all good to go. So that looks good. And that matches this side. And now for the moment of truth, let's unwrap. Boom. Okay. And these islands look pretty good. These are the arms right here and looking good. So you can see that this island looks good as far as like we have up and down lines, but you can see we have this little diagonal here. So I can double click on these islands, go to my transform tool and just kind of align this island the same rotational way as this island here. Just so we can kind of get that nice and straight. So this like this line right here on the grid is straight. And I think that's looking good. Now we can move on to the legs. So this will be kind of like if you think about how we unstitch or how you stitch together jeans. Okay. So let's go grab our UL for loop selection. So you would have a stitch for one of the legs here, right? And then you'd have like a seam down the middle. Okay. And then the seam on the side. So we could do a loop selection uh, like this, where we have, whoops, let's grab this loop selection. So we'll grab, whoops, UL, grab that loop selection again, grab this loop selection here. So you can see how this loops all the way around. And this is basically like how, you know, seams of your pants, uh, would be, uh, a little bit, I guess. Uh, but I think this will look good. And we have a seam here on the inside. We have a seam on the outside. Uh, so if you didn't want the seam on the outside, you could always deselect it. Uh, I guess I'll do that. Let's just deselect the seam here. And then it's okay to have like a seam go right there. And then we'll just go and do that mirror selection. Let's make sure this actually mirrored correctly. Looks like it did. And we'll go to UV unwrap. And you can see that now we have way less distortion on the legs. And here's the leg here. So again, we can also rotate these to be at least in the same direction. So something like this. There we go. And now all we have left is the torso. So again, if you think of a jacket or a t-shirt, you would have like a seam around the edge here. Uh, let's grab our loop selection again. And what I'm gonna do is reselect the arm loop. Let's uncheck this stop at selection here so we make sure we're getting all those loops. And we'll make this loop selection on the leg and we'll make a loop selection on the neck. And let's go ahead and mirror the selection so we have the loop on the uh, right side of the body. And basically what I'm gonna do, you can do this one of two ways. Uh, again, depending on what texture you're applying, like is it fine to have a seam here on the side or do you need to cut around the back of the uh, character and unwrap, unwrap that way. So let's do this two different ways. So we can do a seam just down the back here, or we can do a seam around the outside here and have it basically like cut in two and it will flatten out both the front and the back. So this is very dependent on what your texture is going to be. Is it a big deal if you see a seam on the side here? Or are you just putting like a basic like uh, color channel on it? Uh, so that's very dependent on what you do there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to split this uh, right down the side here. So I am going to check on this stop at selections and select that. Select this right here. I need to make sure I get the seam See, this follows all the way up to right here. And you'd go right under here, grab that seam, and then we will mirror. Actually, it looks like we already got that side. Did we get this seam? No, we'll just mirror. And that seam will get selected. And, uh, Again, moment of truth, UV unwrap. And you can see how that flattened it out. Uh, and it's almost like we have like a flak jacket, I guess you could say, uh, where we have the bit on the front, bit on the back, and the texture is very undistorted, which is really nice. But again, you have these seams right here. So 
if that's a big deal, uh, you might have to go to the alternate route where you just have a seam down the back uh, and then you unwrap that way. So I think this is looking pretty good. We have everything kind of undistorted for the most part. Uh, the head is probably the most distorted thing. So there's one other thing that can help us with uh, distortion and trying to organize our UV islands and all that good stuff. So the first is if we look at our view and go to distortion, you can see there's a lot of distortion on the head. Again, this is the heat map where blue polygons are uh, stretched and red polygons are squashed. So we have a lot of distortion there. A little bit of distortion on the legs. Uh, the torso looks pretty good. Uh, but what I'm going to do is Command or Control A to select all these polygons. And I'm going to go to this Relax UV and hit Apply. And we can do this multiple times. We can try the other one, see what that does. Really doesn't change all that much. Uh, but this is uh, looking a little bit better. You saw a little bit of movement going on there. And then what we can do uh, at this point is organize all these UV islands to maximize this texture space. So we want to try to have all these islands fill up as much of this texture space as we can so we're not wasting this space, okay? So what we'll do is we'll use this geometric UV packing and just hit apply. And you'll see that now everything's orientated different ways and we're filling out this whole texture square very nicely. And you can see this kind of helped uh, with how clean this grid looks as well. So now what we can do is let's start painting. Let's go into Body Paint 3D. And we're going to do that wizard setup. Let's grab our wizard, magical wizard. And the only thing we're going to be worried about is just the sloth SDS. So we can uncheck all these other objects here. So we had the eyes and the nose. We don't want to texture those. And we'll go to the sloth SDS and the sloth. Hit next. We want to use the UVs we already made, so we don't want to recalculate. Uh, so we'll uncheck that. And single material, that's fine. We can choose the color. So maybe like a slothy, maybe he's gray, like brownish gray, something like that. And hit OK. So that'll be the color. Uh, in the color channel of the material that's going to be created. And again, we're going to do 2K, so 2048 and 2048 for 2K uh, texture. And finish, close. And uh, here's the brush. And you can see as I'm kind of going around, let's go in the brush tool and up the size here. You can see that that circle is not getting distorted into, uh, into an oval or anything like that. And you can see we did a pretty good job of UV unwrapping. Now you'll notice the seams here as I go and use the paintbrush. And remember there, there was a seam there. So if I draw, you know, it'll get like half. So I'll undo that. And this is looking pretty good. So what we can do now is we can either paint details directly on our body paint layout. And what I'm going to do is go to my layers and make sure I'm not painting on the background, but create a new layer and I can paint onto this. I need to make sure I got a new color. So we'll make this darker and kind of paint the mouth like this. Well, actually, let's do this a little bit better. Let's, let's be an artist here and draw. Uh, so there we got the mouth. And uh, let's make the dark areas around the eyes. And so we'll make the size a little bit bigger. And you'll notice that as long as I'm hovering over this object that's in front of it, I can't paint. Okay, so this is where this uh, projection painting will come in handy because we can actually just paint behind this eye. And the important part about projection painting, if I paint up here, you'll see that it's just kind of painting flatly on our object there. Uh, so you want to paint in, you know, like a flat view, like a flat projection. And basically, I can paint behind this eye, and I can do something like this. So make that little eye bit here. Now, what you could possibly do as a workflow is, you know, it's kind of hard to paint everything in here. So what you might want to do is paint details like this, 
and clean it up in Photoshop because holy cow, that's not good. <laughs> it's not a good job. Uh, but what you could do instead is like, you know, precisely outline where you want that the eye black around the eyes of a sloth is and just like just for a guide and do something like this. So like, OK, that's <laughs> that's looking pretty good. And if it had like uh, you wanted to have like a white belly or something, you can just go out of this mode here. We can just paint like a little belly just like that. Maybe that's good enough. You know, that's good circle, EJ. I can do a circle. Uh, maybe there's pads on the under the do they have pads? I don't know if they have pads on the arms or the hands, but this one will have pads. But you can just easily paint things on like that. Uh, maybe on the bottom here, there's pads on the feet. And again, we can fix this in, in Photoshop. Uh, we can use uh, some of these other tools here. There's an eraser. We can erase stuff on this layer. Because uh, again, we're, we're working on this top layer here and the underlying background color. There is a blur tool and you know, burn sponge. Uh, there's a smudge and smear tool. So we can like smear that. And this is because of the UV seam. So that's really not gonna probably help us that much. Uh, but just to let you know that there are all these different tools here. So again, very much like Photoshop. Um, but as far as the workflow of using all this stuff as a guide and exporting this out to Photoshop so you can actually precisely draw on your details and just using this as a guide, uh, I just want to show you how you can save this out with the UV grid intact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the brush size about two, uh, a size of two. So it's pretty small. Actually, let's go to like one. So pretty small. And this is going to be the brush stroke that will actually be used to highlight all of the UV lines here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go to the UV 3D. I'm going to select the object, select the material, go back into the layers. And what I'm going to do is go into this texture tab. This is where we can go to layer and choose outline polygons. But of course it's grayed out because we don't have any polygons selected. So if I go to my live selection tool and if these aren't selected automatically, just click on one polygon, command or control A to select them all. And we can go to layer, outline polygons, and actually I'm gonna undo that because what I wanna do is create a new layer here first. So I apply that grid to this top layer. And now I'll go back to layer outline polygons. It'll do its thing. It'll use the color and the uh, brush size to make that grid. And let's go and just turn off, let's go back to the view and you can turn off everything but this top layer and you can see there's that grid. Okay, and if we want to save out all of these layers as say a Photoshop file, we can go ahead, go to texture, go to file, save texture as, and since we have multiple layers, let's grab a Photoshop, we'll save out as a Photoshop file, click OK, and we'll just make this sloth PSD, and this will have both the uh, textured layer like the guides for the mouth and all that good stuff and then the grid layer and then the background as well so let's go ahead and hop into photoshop and grab that sloth psd and here we go we have the background with that grid layer and then some of the details so you can see if i zoom in right down here here's the eyes so those circles are where the eyes would be so we could actually just go in here and start accurately painting these details, bring the opacity up there. We can accurately place, so much more accurate here. I really need to get my uh, hand-eye coordination on my Wacom going. But you can see that you can paint in the details here, paint in the details here. Much better job than I'm doing. Here's that mouth. Just all this to say is that you can make all these changes all these doodles, that's the, the leg, here's the back, here's the arms. I'm just scribbling at this point, just to show you a point. And we can turn off the grid, 
Okay. We can even turn off the base layer and just have this as an overlay. But what I'm going to do is then save this out and then go back into cinema, go back to my objects here. Let's go back to uh, standard and we can load or actually replace this PSD just by reloading it and just say yes. <laughs> and there's the amazing creepy uh, sloth, but you can see all those textures are applied, all those brush strokes that we made in Photoshop. And if you're a better artist than I am, you can really make a fantastic texture with no distortion because again, we are all reliant on that really good UV map that we made uh, by unwrapping our model in a way that we could easily texture and add details onto this guy. Or, you know, we make this into the uh, checkerboard sloth and just apply this texture onto him. And you can see even that texture, uh, the checkerboard is not distorted very much at all. Again, you know, if we wanted to straighten out the legs, you can see, okay, there's the legs, there's that selection. Let's rotate this and kind of adjust that to try to straighten it out, okay? So uh, this is like very basic level how to unwrap things. Uh, but you can see that the workflow is very applicable depending on what model you're you're working on. And I think the the main thing is that the procedural nature in which you can unwrap things like the neck first and then add the seam in the back and then see what that looks like and then unwrap the back and the, the arms and really audition cuts is a very flexible and easy way to get into uh, UV unwrapping. So you can make your own fantastic sloth with amazing textures. So one last thing is this texture. I mean, it's a horrible texture to begin with, but you can see that the resolution is pretty poor. To fix that, double click on your material, go into viewport and change the texture preview side from default to something like that 2K because we made that a 2K texture. So once you do that, you can see we have very high quality scribbles and no, this wasn't a two year old texturing this, it was a 37 year old. All right, so you may not be able to shoot lasers from your eyes or fly, but you know how to UV unwrap now. And that's basically the Superman equivalent of lasers shooting from your eyes in the world of 3D. Now, if you wanna keep up to date with all of the latest happenings in the world of Cinema 4D and MoGraph in general, be sure to hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.